Hello and welcome to this episode of Rail Story to mark International Women's Day. And this week we take a look at the role of women on the 19th and early 20th century railways. This week we've got a guest presenter, the historian and transport enthusiast Lauren Gradwell, whom I first met about six years ago as a railway volunteer at the Science and Industry Museum in Manchester. We were both firemen on the railway. So over to you, Lauren. Thank you, Anthony. So to begin with, in the 21st century, the railways are a diverse employer, with no bar on race, religion, sexuality or gender for employment. But during the 19th century, attitudes were very different. It is interesting to note that the first known railway employee ever recorded was a Wagonway woman during the 18th century. And of course, it's worth noting women and indeed children worked down the pits, which was the raison d'etre of many early railways. In the early 19th century, women were employed by the railways in more traditionally female roles. One of the earliest railways to employ female members of staff was the Liverpool and Manchester Railway. In March 1831, they hired a female attendant to wait upon the female passengers, using the ladies' only waiting room at its Crown Street station. During the 1840s, the London and Birmingham Railway advertised that all its ladies' waiting rooms were attended by females. The Liverpool and Manchester Railway also employed a female office cleaner at Liverpool Road Station in Manchester. This pattern of being employed in traditional feminine roles would continue later in the century, with women employed by the likes of John Compton and Sons, who made railway uniforms at its factory in Crewe, cutting out uniforms and making them up on sewing machines. Women were employed in carriage works upholstering carriages as seamstresses and in highly skilled tasks such as French polishers. In the late 1880s, the Midland Railway employed 12 needlewomen to keep their 450,000 corn sacks in good repair. In 1906, at the Wolverton Carriage and Wagon Works of the London and North Western Railway, 40 women were engaged in French polishing and a further 24 worked in the laundry. Another 60 worked doing the upholstery and fitting out of the carriages as sewers and trimmers. Their numbers had risen to 70 by 1914. The Great Eastern Railway employed women at its Stratford Works in East London from 1894. By 1911, there were nearly 60 female employees, the majority of whom were widows or orphans of railwaymen. They were employed as window blind dyers, French polishers and sewing machinists. Sadly, in many cases, they were paid half or even less of what their male colleagues received. In 1914, there were 850 women employed in railway workshops in the UK. It wasn't just the public railways who employed female staff. Private locomotive builders such as Dubs & Co of Glasgow also employed women in the drawing office as highly skilled tracers from 1866. And that's not to say that women didn't build the railways either. We think of the railway navvies as big, strong, tough men. But in fact, one navvy foreman was a woman, Big Rachel, who stood over six feet tall, weighed 17 stone and smoked a clay pipe. She wasn't someone you messed with. The story was very different in France. The French railways had employed women in traditionally masculine roles from the 1840s as engine cleaners and greasers. Women were also employed as signalers, crossing keepers and station mistresses. During the Second Empire, the railways accounted for 50% of all female labour in France. By 1860, the French railways employed only 1,500 women out of a total labour force of 21,000, or about 7%. But by 1876, there were 13,350 women employed on the French railways. And in 1895, this number was over 25,000. 
By the 1890s, the British Railway Press was reporting strong competition between both men and women was being keenly felt, particularly for office work. At a time when Britain's railways were employing handfuls of women, the Chemin de Feu de Nord employed 3,556 women as gatekeepers and station mistresses. The Chemin de Feu d'Est employed 2,609 women. Jobs were also given to widows of railwaymen, usually in being granted a concession to sell newspapers and tobacco on railway stations. In Britain, railway widows were usually presented with a mangle so that they could take in washing to make ends meet. Although this may seem an enlightened, positive statistic, these French railway women were paid only half of what a man received, and French railway managers discovered they could employ twice the number of women as men, particularly in clerical roles and operational roles such as crossing keepers and signalers as a cost-saving measure. The biggest change for rail women across Europe came in 1914 with the outbreak of the First World War. Able-bodied men were needed in the armed forces, so to keep the country, industries and transport network going, women rose to the challenge. The railways were no exception, and to the rescue came a new breed of independent railway women. In Britain, by the outbreak of World War I, 2% of all railway staff were women, but by 1915 that had risen to 66%. By the end of the war in 1918, some 66,000 women were employed on the railways, half of them doing men's roles including working in engine sheds, as engine cleaners, as platform porters and even guards. Sadly, despite being expected to put in the same amount of work as the men they replaced, they were only paid half the wages. With the coming of peace at the end of the war, men returned home, wanting their old jobs back. Many women were forced to return to their previous expectations of being housewives and bringing up a family. The numbers employed in the railways dwindled to only 200. Though women in World War I had had a taste of freedom, and that proved to themselves that they were just as capable of doing the same job as male staff. This was the beginnings of the change for women's working rights and equalities. Whilst much of the sexism of the 19th century is behind us, Sadly, in 2020 in Britain, the numbers of women employed on the railways is still less than 10%. Whilst better than it was a century ago, perhaps there's still a long journey ahead for the greater equality on the railways. We hope you have enjoyed this video, and if you have, please like, share and subscribe. And if you feel able, also support this channel on Patreon. And see you all next time on Rail Story.